Welcome back to Houston Raceway Park. We are here for the Matco Tools Super Nationals, the third annual running of this prestigious event. And we've seen some fabulous times in Top Fuel. Here we head to round two of Funny Car Eliminations, where the teammates, John Force and Tony Pedregon, race Scotty Cannon and Jerry Tolliver. What a battle that is. The second half, you got Kenny Sayers against Jim Epler, Tommy Johnson Jr. against Corey Lee. And what's surprising here, Corey Lee has lane choice. Down to the far end of the racetrack, let's go down and join Alan Reinhardt with Gary Selsey. Gary, it may be too late to stop the kid from winning the championship, but you can de delay a celebration a couple of weeks. Well, you know what? Things work good. The throttle didn't stick on that run. Team Winston Matko's going to the semis, and it's been a long time. And this car's thundering today. Talking about the throttle sticking, that's what happened to him in the first round. When he ran the 451, the throttle stuck open. That's got to be a scary moment. It's happened to Gary Selzy a couple of times. Um, I don't know why, but this is going to be a great race. Tommy Johnson smoked the tires in the first round, ran a 602. Corey Lee smoked the tires against Al Hoffman, ran a 596. They're, neither one of them will probably smoke the tires. It'll be a great side-by-side -side race, but watch that green car. the tires and did a beautiful job of backing out of the throttle just enough to maintain forward motion and a 507 victory for Tommy Johnson Jr. sends him to yet another semi-final round. Remember he's been in the final round for the last four consecutive races. A great 510 by Corey. Look at both these cars. They did a great job. Corey Lee 510, Tommy Johnson 507 but Corey Lee almost caught Tommy when he had to shut it off. Take a look from our aerial view. You'll see the job that Tommy did with the tires spinning. It'd be like driving on ice at 250 miles an hour. Yeah, he did a great job. He probably grabbed the brake, but then it hurt the motor. He did a great job of driving. I mean, that's why he's won two of the last four races. Now let's go to the far end. Here's Alan. Tommy Johnson, when it spun the tires, it looked like it nuked the motor, but you weren't quitting. No, nah, you can't on a Sunday. You know, I mean, the qualifying, you would shut that off. But uh, come Sunday, you got to get the finish line first. And uh, I was starting to get a little nervous. I was ducking down there. I knew it was going to come apart. I'm telling you, for the last two months, we show up on Sunday, just try to figure out who this guy's going to race in the final. All he's got is one more round to win, and he is in his fifth consecutive final. If you were going to have a race of personalities, it would be hard to beat the next one coming up. Jerry Tolliver, the driver of that car, the Stone Cold Steve Austin entry, up against Scotty Cannon in the Oakley machine. Now, let's go down to Bill Stevens. As we told you earlier today, Scotty Cannon will be tuning his own race car for the rest of the year, and I asked him if he's going to hire a new crew chief anytime soon. He says, you know what? He says, I tuned all of my pro mod cars during all my championship years. He says, this is different, but every time I make a pass, I learn something. So he doesn't seem to be that anxious to bring in another tuner, at least for next year, at least early for next year. Well, Jerry Tolliver uses the services of Rob Flynn, and he's got a depth of experience in this funny car wars. And if there is any one thing that might be lacking in Scotty Cannon's tune-up is he can't go back into history and say, well, what did it do? three years ago under the identical condition. But you know what? If an owner driver can tune their own car, they've got anywhere from $150,000 to $300,000 that they'd be paying a crew chief to tune their car, to put in their car, make more test runs, and maybe even learn more. See how it turns out. The bright red test body, it's called. New look of the Oakley machine up against the WWF and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Ride for Jerry Dolliver. Now there was an interesting race indeed. Both of them ran good in the first eighth of a mile, but then strange things happened. Scotty had to shut it off, and we saw the WWF car go close to the guardrail. Yeah, we saw Scotty. He was out there, and then all of a sudden he had engine problems. He shut it off. You can see, see on the left side, it's dropping cylinders. Bad. He has major engine problems. He had to shut it off, and about that time, Tolliver's went dead, and I think if Scotty, if it happened any sooner, Scotty had kept his foot in it. All he had done just keep under power for about another half a second. He could have won the race. On board with Tolliver. Watch the guardrail get close. They have turned that wheel, trying to steer away from it, but it isn't a fast reaction indeed in the car itself. So Jerry Tolliver's 532 puts him in the semifinals. Oh, it's John Force and Tony coming up next.
Welcome back to Houston Raceway Park. This is round number two action in Funny Car. Tony Pedregon against the big boss man, John Force. If you are an NFL fan, I know where you should be on Monday nights. On ESPN, watch Monday Night Countdown, 7 p.m. every Monday. And if you want more information, just log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. Tony and John, a match made in heaven. The championship's clinched down at the far end of the racetrack. Alan has had a chance to catch up with Jerry Tolliver. Well, it's Halloween and you're supposed to be scared. That's why that face is painted on the front of Jerry Tolliver's car. But if you think that's a scary face, what about this one? Ooh, that's bad, huh? Actually, we, uh, we got lucky on that one there. Uh, car got out of the groove and started smoking the tire and got close to the wall. I had to click a little bit there and kind of feather through the through the finish line and looked over Scott, he wasn't there. But, uh, you know, I'd rather uh, maybe today be uh, lucky than good because uh, we're looking for that you know what. I do know I what. Don't say it. Don't say it. Points, trophies, and Winston's no bull hundred thousand dollars if he can win this thing. Hey, Jerry Tolliver's uh, counting those zeros, but yet doesn't even want to acknowledge that it's out there. Yeah, you don't want to get lost. You know, you know what your goal was at the start of the day, and that was just to win this race. Don't worry about the money. Oh, this could be a great race now if they put John's tune up in the Zintec car. This is going to be a good race. Neither car is going to lay down. I think John's hoping Tony picks it up a little bit, but I know both drivers want to win. the tires John smokes the tires but much later you talk about vulnerable a 506 at 279 Tony's problem set in early boy that was ugly Tony always beats John off the starting line and John left on Tony by boy four hundreds Tony goes up and smoke Tony tries to pedal it it gets sideways on him he's off the throttle he's back on it brings it around that car's really loose he had to shut it off or crash and then all of a sudden four starts smoking the tires then he gets a motor. In that slow-mo replay, did you see the amount of flex in Tony's car? Is it actually the chassis bending that much or just the body? The chassis bending that much. It's pretty amazing. Those cars have that kind of horsepower. The emergency hatch on the top used as the exit means for most of the funny car drivers. John Force getting out, and I can well imagine he isn't going to be real thrilled with that kind of performance. Here is the race that certainly has got the dark horse in it. There it is. Car of Kenny Sayers out of Ed Margaretti's Racing, the People's Racer. You see that on his spoiler on the back. And here he is in round number two against the WWF Juggernaut and Jim Epler. Let's go down to Allen with John. John, if Tony hadn't smoked the tires, you might have been had. 506 won't take out that other car very often. She, she got out there and she wounded herself. This old Mustang got a little sideways, got out of the groove, and I don't know if it spun the tires or burnt some pistons. I thought she was going to, I couldn't get her off the wall. I didn't see Petragon. I tried to get her back out. I just couldn't, just got her to the lights and uh, clicked her off. About burnt this old collectible right here, this action heap. That's why they pay the drivers the big bucks. It is. In layman's terms, what happened? They heard a motor. What, what really happened, they heard a motor. It was near the wall, but that doesn't bother Force. We all know that. They heard a motor, and Tony got beat. But so what? They're in the semifinals. How about Kenny Sayers? Can you imagine what's got to be going through his mind? He's already now taken out Whit Baysmore, who smoked the tires in the first round. It was kind of hard on himself in the interview, uh, acknowledging that, hey, he's paid to get out there and get it from A to B, and he didn't do it. You know what? They went to Dallas. They didn't qualify here. They're in the second round. That's neat. It's great. It's consistent. And we need new cars like this. Well, Kenny Sayers lost track of where he was, crossed over the center line, and took out all the cones in the timing trap. And fortunately for Jim Epler, he was well ahead of him at that point. That will be an interesting replay. 5.02, the winning time at 305 miles an hour for Epler. Now watch, Sayers really kind of loses it down in the last eighth of a mile. Yeah, he does, but you know what? This is his first race in competition he qualified at for NHRA. This is going to happen. You kind of get a tunnel vision. Maybe he drove it over, dropped a cylinder right there, it pushed him over. He got that cone, then he got that cone, and then he got the next cone. But you know what? He was here and he made it to the second round. That's a good start. I can't think of any more graphic pictures to demonstrate what happens when that cylinder loses fire and it just pushes you right over across the center line. We're coming back to Houston. We've got more racing. Stick around. <laughs> 